Hi everyone, it's Mal from Sparkly Belly. So I've been getting many requests to do ATS and Tribal Fusion costuming over the years and so here it goes. These pants are called full yard pantaloons because there are about two yards of fabric around each leg. I'm so excited to share this tutorial with you because they're super comfortable and poofy and they beautifully flare out as you spin. And they're quite simple to make. So let's get started! To make these pantaloons, you need lightweight cotton. Lightweight cotton is recommended because it's breathable. To make 4 yard pantaloons, make sure the fabric is about 100 centimeters or 40 inch wide and you need about 4 meters or 4 yards plus 30 centimeters extra. Loose fitting shorts or pants to use as a pattern. 1 meter or 1 yard of 5 centimeter wide elastic, 50 centimeters or 20 inches of 1 centimeter wide elastic, and matching color thread. First, measure your hip circumference. It's the largest part of your hips. Next, cut your fabric into two 2 meter or 2 yard long pieces and lay them right size together. Since it's lightweight fabric, it's hard to align all edges, so focus on aligning the top corners. Turn your pattern pants inside out and put one pant into the other one so you can see the crotch seam really well. Place the backside crotch, which has the deeper curve, 1 cm or 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge, and the waistband also 1 cm or 3 eighths of an inch away from the top. But I placed my waistband a little lower as you can see because this fabric has this beautiful border and I wanted it to come right next to the waistband. If your fabric doesn't have any requirements like that or what I'm saying doesn't make any sense, it's perfectly fine to place the waistband at 1cm from the top. Trace the curved section 1cm away from our pattern. That 1cm extra is for seam allowance. Then measure the distance from the top edge to the end of the curved section and measure it on the other side of the fabric. Mark a point right on the edge. Flip your pants so the front side crotch or the shallower curve is visible and place the end of that curve 1 cm or 3 eighths of an inch from the point you marked. And just like we did earlier, trace the curve 1 cm away from the pattern and at the waistband, extend the line right up to the top edge. Cut along the lines and finish the curved edges and the side edges of the panels so they won't fray. I used pinking shears to cut so I can save time, but of course you can use a zigzag stitch or do a roll hem or use a serger. If you use the selvage edges at the top and bottom like I am here, you don't have to worry about these edges. Then take one of the panels and fold it right sides together. Align the straight edges and do a straight stitch along these edges with a 1cm seam allowance. This is the inseam of the pantaloons. Repeat for the other panel. Now here's the fun part. Flip one of the legs right side out and stick it inside the other leg so the right sides are facing each other. Align the front and back crotch section, line up the inseam and do a straight stitch along the curve all the way from front to back. Take the inside leg out and you have a pair of gigantic pants. Don't worry, we're going to make them fit you just right. So next, at the top of the pants, we'll fold the fabric here. It's called pleating and it helps reduce the puffiness around the waist. To do this, first measure the entire waistband section for your pants. And do a quick calculation. Take the waistband measurement minus your hip measurement plus 3 centimeters or 1 and a quarter of an inch. Then divide that number by 24. Let's call this number length A. So let's try pleating. From the center seam of the pant, first measure 6 cm or 2 and 3 eighths of an inch to one side. Make a fold there, 
so that the width of the fold is length A. So basically the distance between the two folds created there should be length A. Place pins or clips there so we won't lose the folds. Then from the first fold, measure length A again and make another fold there. The width of the fold is also length A, so the fold under the top layer should align with the first fold. Repeat to make another fold. So you have three folds on one side right now. Then do the same for the other side. Then repeat the folding on the back side of the pants and you have 12 folds in total. At the side seams, your folds may have to overlap. If that's the case, just overlap them with the front fold over the back one. At this point, just to be sure, measure the total length of the waistband here. It should be about your hip circumference plus 3 centimeters or 1 and 3 eighths of an inch. If it's way off, double check the number or width of the folds. Then do a basting stitch with a 5 millimeter or a quarter of an inch seam allowance to keep the folds in place. A basting stitch is basically a straight stitch with the longest stitch length setting. We're going to attach a waistband here. Waistbands come in different styles. For these pantaloons, I chose the drawstring waistband that I used for making the 25 yard skirt before. This is a nice sturdy stretch waistband, but the elastic won't roll around inside and you can fit better with the drawstrings. So to make this waistband, first cut a 14 centimeter or 5.5 inch wide strip and the length is your hip measurement plus 5 centimeters or 2 inches. At the center of the waistband strip, mark 1 centimeter or 3 eighths of an inch tall lines that are about 2.5 centimeters or 1 inch apart. From 3.5 centimeters or 1.5 inches from the bottom edge and sew so buttonholes around them. It's basically a narrow zigzag stitch with the shortest stitch length around the lines. And open up the buttonholes. Take it to your ironing board and fold one centimeter or three eighths of an inch from the top edge towards the wrong side and press. Do the same from the bottom edge. Then fold it in half and press again. Then open it up and sew the short ends right sides together with the 1 cm seam allowance and make a circle. Now match up the top of the pantaloons and the waistband right sides together and make sure the edge closer to the buttonholes is aligned with the top of the pantaloons. And first align the back seam of the pants and the seam of the waistband. Then align the front seam of the pants and the center point of the two buttonholes. Then match up the size. As I mentioned earlier, I moved my waistband a little lower on the pants so the border of the pants will end up right beside the waistband. But for yours, you can ignore this and just align them together. Then stitch along the fold of the waistband. Next, fold the top edge of the waistband 1 cm or 3 eighths of an inch and fold it over to encase the seam allowance and cover the stitches on the wrong side of the pants. Place a pin on the right side of the pants to hold the fold in place and do this all the way around the waistband. And with the right side up, do a straight stitch right along the seam. It's called stitch in the ditch. It creates a nice clean finish for your waistband. And leave a few inch gap to insert elastic. Take your thick elastic and figure out how much you need for it to be snug around your waist. Add two and a half centimeters or one inch to it and cut. Then insert the elastic through the casing. I'm using a safety pin to guide the elastic. Once it's gone through the entire casing, make sure it's not twisted in there and overlap the ends 2.5 cm or 1 inch. Sew the ends together and close the waistband by stitching in the ditch. 
Now using a straight stitch, do a top stitch over the elastic waistband at one centimeter or three eighths of an inch from the top and another one at one centimeter from the bottom. Pull and stretch out the waistband while you sew. This keeps the elastic from rolling around inside the casing and creates a channel for you to add a drawstring in. Now if you have a long cord or string for this, go ahead and use that. But if you don't, you can cut a strip like this that's 2 meters long and 3 centimeters or 1 and a quarter of an inch wide. I sewed two strips together to make 2 meters. Fold it right sides together lengthwise, do a straight stitch with a 5 millimeter or a quarter of an inch seam allowance and turn it inside out. Fold in the ends, do a straight stitch and give it a good press and you have a nice matching string. Take your string and insert it through the channel using the buttonholes. Once it comes back out, tie a knot at each end of the string. The drawstring makes the waistband sturdier and helps hold up the pantaloons made of 4 yards of fabric. We're almost done. Finally, at the bottom of the pants on the wrong side, fold 5 millimeters or a quarter of an inch, then fold again 2 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. Press, pin, and sew with a 2 millimeter or 1 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, leave a 5 centimeter or 2 inch gap. And see how much elastic you need for your ankle and add 1 centimeter or 3 eighths of an inch and cut two pieces at this length. Insert one of them into the elastic casing. I learned this the hard way, but it helps to attach another safety pin to the other end in the fabric so you won't lose the end as you pull the elastic through the casing. Overlap the ends about 1 cm and top stitch to secure the ends. And stitch the opening shut. Repeat this for the other pant. And now your 4 yard pantaloons are complete. I can't wait for you to try them on. They're really comfy and even though they have the beautiful volume, the waist area is not poofy thanks to your pleating effort and the pantaloons are so light. Make sure to try spinning while you're in them because they flare out so nicely and they look amazing under a skirt as well. They certainly add colors and fun to your ATS or Tribal Fusion costumes. I really enjoyed making these pantaloons and I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please share love and share this tutorial with your dancer friends. And if you make your own pantaloons, share your creation at Sparkly Belly's Facebook group. It really makes me happy when I see what you all make inspired my tutorials. And this group is full of amazing ideas shared by the members. Next week, I'll continue the ATS theme and I'll show you how to make a simple yet fun ATS belt. If you're curious, subscribe to my channel or sign up for my newsletter at sparklybelly.com pantaloons so I can send it to your inbox. Thanks for watching and keep sparkling!